Hey, hello everybody, how are you doing? So um, today we're looking at First Samuel chapter 18 to 20 and we are going to jump as well and go and look and I'm looking at my Bible reading plan. We're also going to read Psalm 11 and Psalm 59. Okay, because remember like what I said is that uh, there are certain seasons that we see in the Bible or you read the story again and you think oh, it's a repetition but it's because of how chronologically, um, uh, how those things happened chronologically. So, um, yeah, so let's look at First Samuel chapter 18 uh, to 20. During that season, it is the time that David then wrote Psalm 11 and Psalm 59. Um, so I will look at um, chapter 18, verse 22 to 27. It says, and, and so ordered his attendants, speak to David privately and say, look, the king likes you and his attendants all love you. Now become his son-in-law. They repeated these words to David, but David said, do you think it is a small thing, a small matter to become the king's son-in-law? I'm only a poor man and little known. When Saul's servants told him what David had said, Saul replied, say to David, the king wants no other prize for the bride than a hundred Philistine foreskins to take revenge on his enemies. Saul's plan was to have David fall by the hands of the Philistines. Hmm. When the attendants told David these things, he was pleased to become the king's son-in-law. So before the allotted time elapsed, David took his men with him and went out and killed 200 Philistines and brought back their forces. They counted out the full number to the king so that David might become the king's son-in-law. Then Saul gave his daughter to David, uh, daughter Michal to David. Oh my God, you say you have a re unreasonable father-in-law. He's saying you've got unreasonable in-laws. I mean, I've, I've had this talk in the, in the streets that, oh, my in-laws are unreasonable. Listen to this one. His intention is to destroy the man. Um, and so he sends people to say, you know, push him so that he can he, he can really come and come through and, and say he wants to be my my my, my son-in-law. But the intention was that he would fall by the end of the Philistine. He just wanted him dead. And David decides, ah, okay, let me show you what I'm made of. Instead of a hundred um foreskins, I'm gonna bring in two hundred um foreskins of two hundred men. Um you don't approach a man and say, hey, buddy, what's going on? Uh, listen, uh, I know this is a hard thing to ask, but uh, may I please have your foreskin? Yeah, I, I need to use it. I need to, to pay my bride price. What? He, he will, it's impossible. So imagine what David had to go through to actually get those foreskins. Unreasonable unreasonable father in law and look at verse 28 when Saul realized that the Lord was with David and that his daughter Micah loved David Saul became still more afraid of him and he remained his enemy the rest of his days um chapter so Psalm 19 verse 1 um I'm going to carry on there. So told his son, Jonathan, and all the attendants to kill David. But Jonathan had taken a great liking to David. What is it about this David that is making him so acceptable and so liked? Um, I want us to talk about that, to figure out what causes people around you to just be drawn to you. We know earlier on that when we are, we, we were, when David was described, we were told that he was full of the Spirit of God. And he was also so full of wisdom. And he was skillful. He played, a, 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 well, I was about to say a guitar, because, well, an equivalent of a guitar. He played and he played well. And he was also so good looking. I think David was just so pleasant to be around. Is that you? Are you pleasant to be around? Does everyone around you? Just end up taking a liking uh, to you. So um, I carry on there. And so this is now uh, chapter 19, verse 11 to 15. 
and Saul sent men to David's house to watch it and to kill him in the morning. But Michal, David's wife, warned him, if you don't run for your life tonight, tomorrow you'll be killed. So Michal uh, made an idol and put it on the bed. You know, you, when you're reading the Bible, sometimes it feels like you're watching a movie. I mean, I've seen kids uh, running through, you know, running out and then putting pillows and pretending to be asleep. Yet they've gone to a party in a movie, you know. And this is what Michal does. Verse 14, when Saul sent the men to capture David, Michal said, he is ill. Then Saul sent the men back to see David and told them, bring him up to me in his bed so that I may kill him. Oh, this man is... Um, listen, let me tell you something about the devil. The devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy, and he will go at whatever cost. To get you so this is the picture that we're getting here with david's life but somehow oh lord he is such favor soul because he's so wicked he has even managed to turn his own children against him uh oh man i i love the subject of parenting because um i think that's where everything just that's where the cookie crumbles when the parenting is not done right that's where many things get messed up for many children and for some of us now our in our age we are the way that we are because of faulty foundations he has managed to get his children to detest him and um he's managed to get them to turn him to turn uh, uh, against him uh, he's such a, a an amazing thing that he has done so be careful there are certain things that you if you continue doing you will succeed in turning your children against you you will succeed so watch it hey so here's another part that excites me your enemies will prophesy when you're in the right place with god right your enemies this is the art of acceptance i'm still talking about acceptance uh with people your enemies will end up even prophesy against you and god says he is god who causes um wars to cease and he causes the enemies of a man to come and bless him even though they 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 hate you listen to this it's happening it's a reality for for our dear man here says so Saul so, uh, was told about it and he sent more men and they prophesied too so they've gone to get uh, David and then they get there they start prophesying over his life hey David you know what? you're going to be king and we know ah, they prophesied too so sent men a third time and they also prophesied finally he himself left for rama and went to great uh, to the great system of seku and he asked where are samuel and david over the north uh now uh, at rama they said sorry now at rama so Saul went to now at rama but the spirit of the lord came upon him and he, he walked uh, along prophesying until he came to Naoth. Uh, he stripped off his garments, and he too prophesied in Samuel's presence. He lay naked all that day and all that night. Oh, Lord. This is why people say is Saul also among the prophets. So, um, God God is so amazing in his ways. You know, he's so, so amazing in his ways. Anyway, so we're going to move along. Um, one of the things we learn here, if you read First Samuel chapter uh, 20, um most of the verses are 12 and 17 and 20 and, and 42, we realize that David and Jonathan suddenly became inseparably. They were so inseparable. David, they, they gave their lives for each other. Um, and it would be nice to have such friends, hey? Friends like this. I have friends like this. I hope you have friends that are able to lay everything down for you because you are that kind of friend who would lay down. So you don't just get friends who would lay things down for you when you're not the, the kind of friend who will, who will do that. So uh, watch it there. Watch it there and make sure that you attract the right people around you because you're sowing the correct seeds. Blessings.